Welcome. I am Dr. G.C. Smothers, one of nine elders at Hillcrest. And today, July 27, 2021, as we pause to remember beloved elder Donald Augustus Perry, this COVID-19 pandemic is far from over and millions still remain unvaccinated. But praise be to God that at Hillcrest, more than 90% of our members will be fully vaccinated by Sunday, August the 1st. So as we prepare to return to in-person, indoor worship, I want to join with our coordinating elder for the quarter, Brother Ken Neal, and our minister, Dr. Tori and Salary, in thanking all our members and all our leaders for their parts in helping to make this grand reopening possible. Special shout outs to Deacon Dwayne Calhoun and the Hillcrest Hit Team for all they have done behind the scenes. And we would be remiss if we didn't acknowledge the outstanding contributions of our medical and emergency response team led by nurse sister Daphne Gill and Dr. Iris Buchanan Perry our very own clinical trials volunteer, Dr. Tracy Elam, our vaccine partners, the Family Health Centers of Georgia at West End, led by nurse sister Vivian Blackstock, with whom we educated, coordinated, and or transported over 40 seniors, members and non-members, to get their COVID vaccine shots in February, March, and April of this year. Then in May and June of this year, after the vaccine was authorized for youth ages 12 through 15, we partnered with two local pharmacies, Discount Pharmacy in Stone Mountain and Value Care Pharmacy in Conyers, and with trusted Hillcrest medical professionals like Dr. Roland Hamilton and his wife, Dr. Ashley Hamilton, nurse sister Teresa Thompson and others to vaccinate 13 more people, eight youth and five adults on our Hillcrest campus. Last but certainly not least, special kudos to our very own Dr. John Bonham, who is an assistant professor at the Morehouse School of Medicine in the Department of Psychiatry, and who has agreed in this, his third COVID recording for our website not only to answer some lingering questions from our members and friends with regard to the virus, the vaccine, and the variants, but also to share some pearls of wisdom from his soon to be published peer-reviewed article in the Journal of Nursing and Healthcare Science entitled, Addressing COVID Vaccine Hesitancy Among African Americans. Finally, from my years at CDC, I firmly believe that a COVID variant anywhere in the world is a public health danger everywhere in the world. So please listen to his trusted comments on the dangerous Delta variant and take heed. And now with no further ado, I introduce to some and present to others, brother Dr. John Bonham, MD, MPH. Thank you. Okay, good day Hillcrest. It's wonderful to be back. Uh, I'm here to give us some updates about the COVID-19 situation. We've received a number of questions. I'm going to begin by answering those. The first question is, why are we seeing an, a change in symptoms from March 2020? Well, I remember the first lecture that I gave here, we talked about COVID being from the neck down, and it would be fever, shortness of breath, and cough. Now we're seeing a lot of symptoms around the mouth and nose, more like the common cold. A common new symptom that we're seeing is dry mouth, uh, sometimes that can lead to a white patchy tongue because of the dry, dryness. Sometimes there'll be sores in the mouth because of the dryness. Headache seems to be more prominent. Sore throat is happening and sometimes runny nose. Sometimes it can present with pink eye, with conjunctivitis, that COVID can present that way. Uh, one, why is it presenting differently? 
Many people are vaccinated. That causes the disease to present differently when it does occur. There are breakthrough cases with COVID that come through the vaccine, but they're usually much milder. That with the new strain, we're seeing younger people getting sick, and that changes the presentation. They would present differently from older people. The new variant is different, particularly the Delta variant, uh, variant which is more infective. So the point is I'm going to talk more about the Delta variant and how it's different from the previous variants as we go on. Another question was, why does COVID-19 affect different people differently? There are many diseases that affect different people differently. You have to consider the risk factors and comorbidities. The fact is that COVID, is a, we think of it as a disease of the lungs, but it's also a disease of the blood vessels, and the blood vessels can reach everywhere. You know, COVID can cause blood clots to be thrown. A blood type may affect presentation. If you have blood type A, you tend to have more severe disease. I have blood type, type A, so I made sure I was vaccinated. Gender is a factor. Males tend to have more serious disease. Race is a factor. Blacks tend to have more serious disease. One of the things, vitamin D levels seem to affect uh, the, the severity of COVID. If your vitamin D levels are adequate, you tend to ha have, have about half the chance of dying. So uh, uh, I personally take vitamin D supplementation, vitamin D3. Age is a big factor. You know, the older you are, generally the more severe COVID is. So generally speaking, uh, you know, there's a lot of different reasons why COVID can affect different people differently. And the question was, is it safe to go on vacations now? It depends on how much risk you're willing to take. You know, when I went to the grocery store this morning, even though I'm fully vaccinated, I wore my mask. Anytime I know that I'm around places where it's likely to be crowded, where people may be shoulder to shoulder, uh, where people uh, are, are younger people who are less likely to be vaccinated, big crowds of people of unknown vaccination status, I wear my mask. I went to the Georgia Renaissance Festival about a month ago. And uh, there were a lot of people there, and any time I was around a crowd, I would keep my mask on except when it was time to eat, and then I would go someplace where I'd be uh, by myself. So the point is that uh, if you are going to a place where there's a likelihood of exposure, where there, where there are big crowds, where there are, um, maybe there's an outbreak in a certain locale or something of that nature, I would consider you know, wearing a mask when I know I'm going to be around other people of uh, of uh, unknown vaccination status, but on the other hand, I don't want to stop living. So if I needed to take a vacation someplace, I, I would be prepared to take precautions like masking, hand washing, and social distance, but I would still go there, but I would just be prepared to take pre uh, precautions. So, you know, we don't want to live in COVID jail. You know, if, if you want to take a vacation, take a vacation, but, you know, be aware that there are precautions that you can take. The, uh, the COVID-19 vaccines are also an option since we have three of them. You know, we have the two mRNA vaccines, Pfizer and Moderna, and we have the, um, the uh, Johnson & Johnson that uses the viral vector vaccine. One question was, do you support COVID-19 vac vaccinations for children of all ages? That's a tough question. We recently had a, a news story about a five-year-old boy that died, which was really tragic. Uh, but the point is that it hasn't been proven safe yet for children under 12. Children are, are a different animal from adults because you're dealing with growth, you're dealing with, with, with a lot of factors that you're not dealing with. They're generally more resilient than adults are, but the point is that we're, we're currently in clinical trials to see how the vaccines affect children. And um, since we have different types, the mRNA and the viral vector vaccine, probably by the end of the year, we'll know whether a COVID vaccine is safe for children of all ages. Will the ingredients in the COVID vaccine make you magnetic? Now, that's something that I've heard that where you get the shot, you can stick a magnet to it. Uh, I don't know how, that, 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 that's totally um, just off the wall, to use an expression. I, I, my answer is it won't make you magnetic if you weren't magnetic before. The second question, another question is, is it safe for, the, for a pregnant person to take the COVID vaccine? It does not affect pregnancy. The COVID infection in pregnancy is likely to be more severe. If a woman gets COVID, you have to consider that the expanding uterus is compressing the lungs. So they have lung, a pregnant woman has, especially in late pregnancy, has less lung capacity to begin with. So if she gets COVID, it could be much more severe for her. So vaccination will protect her and it will protect the fetus as well because the fetus gets the antibodies from the mother. Here's a very common question. Will COVID vaccines change my DNA? 
the Pfizer and Moderna are mRNA, messenger RNA vaccines. They don't even go into the nucleus of the cell where the DNA is, is uh, there. You can't convert DNA into RNA without special enzymes, without special uh, chemical reactions. Uh, viruses like HIV can do that because they can, they can convert uh, RNA uh, to DNA and they can also integrate it. They have a compound called integrase that can put it into the cell, but most viruses can't do that. And the mRNA vaccine, vaccine is not even giving you a virus. It's just giving you the code for the spike protein. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine does use DNA and it, inter and it goes into the nucleus, but it cannot integrate with the host DNA without a, ke without a ke chemical called integrase, which, uh, which it does not have. This is an important question. Can my employer or school mandate COVID-19 vaccinations? Currently, there are some people who are, who are letting people go, and uh, it's going to be a legal question, you know, whether they're allowed to do that. Sometimes it can be at least morally or ethically justified if, if the vaccination status is going to affect people. For instance, you, let's say a, a situation where you're in a nursing home with vulnerable elderly people. If you're not vaccinated, you may give them something. So the point is that it may be upheld in certain situations. So that's still a question that's out there. but. I think we can expect that, that employers are going to, in some situations where it, appear, where it appears to affect workplace safety or the safety of clients, where, it may, where we may face mandates. Are we likely to need booster shots in another year? Right now, the immunity seems to be holding. If new variants emerge or immunity fades over time, possibly, but immunity is very difficult to gauge because there are two arms of immunity. One is the antibody immunity, which is the, uh, the white blood cells manufacture special proteins that attack the virus, and there's also the cellular immunity, a type of cell called T cell can, can, uh, can do that, and they have long memory, so we're going to need uh, more time to assess if, if, the, if the immunity is going to fade, but right now it seems to be holding, and it seems to be effective against the variants as well. Some of the vaccines are slightly less effective against the variants, but still very good at keeping people out of the hospital and keeping them out of the ICU. So uh, I think that right now we don't need a booster, but we need to see how the epidemic is going. If it starts to grow in spite of vaccination, we may have to be thinking about, about our boosters. Why is the Delta variant worse than the other COVID-19 strains? Well, when a person is infected with the Delta virus, uh, a variant, what they find is that the amount of virus is a thousand times higher than the previous variants. That makes it more contagious and more likely to cause serious disease. So the Delta variant is so far the worst yet. We have to realize that when a, when a virus is, it originated in India, and in India, you know, you have a huge population, sometimes densely packed together, so the virus had a lot of opportunity to spread, and the more likely it is to spread, the more likely it is to cause severe disease. We're racing to survive the virus with vaccines and medications, but the virus is racing to survive also, so it's adapting. So the point is that whenever you have a large population of unvaccinated people, that especially people in close proximity, you have a lot of opportunity for spread. And every time the virus spreads, there's a chance for it to change. So we had the Alpha variant, which was from Britain, the Beta variant, which I believe was South Africa, the Gamma variant from Brazil, and now we have the Delta variant from India. They're naming them with Greek letters because they didn't want to use nation names because they felt that that was stigmatizing. But we now have a, a Lambda and an Epsilon variant as well that we're watching. The Delta variant appears to be the most wor worrisome so far. It isn't a thousand times as deadly as, as the previous viruses, but it does re result in higher levels, more likelihood of contagion, and it seems to be affecting younger people. You know, earlier in the epidemic, we didn't think that younger people were at great risk. Now it seems that the risk has increased, and the Delta variant is now over 80% of the infections in the United States. Um, does the Delta variant affect fully vaccinated people? Not nearly as severely as unvaccinated people. Vaccinated people, even with the Delta variant, mostly have no symptoms or only mild symptoms. They call that a breakthrough. It's almost certain that if you're vaccinated, you won't face hospitalization. They said that among vaccinated people, only 0.0059% about what is that? Uh, 
of maybe six ten thousandths of, 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 of the cases, six out of ten thousand cases or somewhere around that neighborhood. I'm, not, I'm doing the math in my head, but I, it might not be completely accurate, but it's very, very low. The, the, only a small number of people are going to be hospitalized. And that, there doesn't appear to be any difference between the vaccines, whether you got Pfizer or whether you got Moderna or whether you got Johnson and Johnson. It still has a tremendous reduction in the hospitalization. Another question, why do we keep getting more and more COVID-19 variants? Because every time the virus spreads, there's an opportunity for it to change. When you have large numbers of unvaccinated people, there's a lot of spread and mutation is going to take place. And a lot of the concern is that a lot of the, the uh, variants are going to come from c countries that are not first world countries like America, you know, maybe may in uh, overseas countries that don't have a lot of medical resources and have high population and high population density, that may be where, where we're going to see a lot of, of, uh, of uh, variants emerge. So we're, we're going to be facing these for a while because uh, uh, it's not possible to vaccinate the entire world, I don't think. Uh, the breakthrough cases, one, one number that I got, out of 140 million people vaccinated, 5,400 cases. Now we used to deal with 3,000 deaths a day and we're not dealing with that anymore. But Delta could cause a spike, especially among the unvaccinated people. Now, one of the issues that we need to deal with is vaccine hesitancy. You know, anybody is welcome at Hillcrest. You know, we have multiple people of multiple ethnicities here, but Hill, Hillcrest is primarily an African-American church in this, in this congregation right now. And within the United States, African-Americans as a demographic group have been impacted by COVID-19 way out of proportion to our numbers in the population. But paradoxically, African Americans are one of the groups that are most resistant to accepting the vaccine. Um, they, they did a study of, of counties that had high African American populations and low African American populations, and they found that in the high African American population counties, these were in New York and in Illinois, the death rate was about five times higher. So the point is that what, why, why African Americans are so affected? Uh, living conditions may be more crowded. We don't, we don't have the room for, for big houses where people can social distance. The jobs may, that we have may, be, may not present the opportunity for social distancing. You know, for instance, if you work in a warehouse or something like that, um, you know, access to health care, a lot of different reasons may, may contribute to that. But African Americans do have a higher death rate uh, than most, most other ethnicities. But when they did a survey, the NAACP did a survey and found that only 14% of blacks in the survey, this was back in November 2020, believed that this vaccine was safe and only 18% stated that they would definitely receive it. So the point is there's a lot of vaccine uh, resistance in the African American community and that is a problem for us. One of the things that we need to deal with is that uh, African Americans don't have the same level of trust in the, in the healthcare system, in the pharmaceutical companies, and in government that other groups have. Only 5% of physicians in the United States are African American, and receiving healthcare from persons who don't share your experience doesn't promote confidence. African Americans uh, tend to express dis, uh, distrust in government and doubt its motives. There can be, and then there are some things that. Um, a vaccine hesitancy that aren't specific to African Americans, like some people fear serious, immediate, or long-term vaccine effects. Some people question the purity of the vaccine. Some people object to the process by which the vaccine is manufactured. Some people said that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was using products of aborted fetuses, and that offends some people. Um, there's a, a group of social, uh, social groups called anti-vaxxers that say the whole pandemic is just a hoax and they don't trust vaccines of any type. And uh, then again, there's distrust of government. So what we need to do to reach people, we need to reach them through the people that they do trust. Some African Americans have trust their health care providers, their health departments, community leaders. Part of the reason why we're doing this here is that the church has a lot of credibility with the African American community and the church leaders uh, have, have skills at, at presenting uh, information at 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 at, at uh, creating an atmosphere of trust, and they also practice orators. They know how to get messages across, and uh, they get people to understand. When you get vaccinated, you're not only protecting yourself; you're protecting the people around you. 
when, when, a, when a population is sufficiently vaccinated, we don't have to deal with these issues of variants emerging and things of that nature. And we also need to be transparent concerning the vaccine information. If some vaccine is causing effects, causing problems in people, we need to let people know about that. We need to maximize vaccine availability. You know, we've had vaccination campaigns right here in the church where we vaccinated people. So the point is making the vaccine available, providing information about the vaccine. Right now, the vaccine seems infinitely safer than, than facing COVID, especially this new Delta variant. And we also have to respect it when people refuse to be vaccinated because there's a lot of, you know, this society has given African Americans reason to be suspicious at times. And if a person makes a personal decision to refuse vaccination, we need to respect that and hope that not feeling coerced, they'll come around and reconsider and perhaps get vaccinated. The National Medical Association, which is a group of, of uh, African American physicians, they're trying to um, review the emerging data regarding COVID-19 in, in reference to communities of color. Uh, a myth that they encounter is that the vaccine is going to cause infertility. That's false. Some people believe that, that people who have been vaccinated shed virus or shed spike protein and make other people sick. That's false. So the point is that we need to get the, the truth out there and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of nonsensical beliefs about both the vaccine and the virus that need to be corrected. Even um, the, the American Medical Association uh, published a study called Distrust, Race, and Research, and that African Americans were more likely than whites to believe that physicians would ask them to participate in harmful research, to expose them to unnecessary risks, to not fully explain the research or treat them as a part of an experiment without their consent. So they are appointing an African American physician, Marcella Nunes Smith, uh, as, as chair of the president's uh, COVID equity task force to try to uh, to try to reach the African American community to, to dispel some of this distrust. You know, looking at the numbers right now, the vaccine tend to rarely cause serious problems where, and 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 uh, and, and uh, serious effects, and where COVID commonly causes serious problems. People worry about the long term effects of the vaccine. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine has already been tested against the, um, that platform that was used to develop the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The viral vector vaccine it's, it's caused was already used against Ebola, so we know what that does over the long term. And the people who took Moderna back in March 2020, none of them are in, in the clinical trials, none of them are exhibiting uh, long-term side effects. Where COVID does have long-term side effects, some people who get it are never the same. So the point is that right now, we are in a risky situation, but the risks of the vaccine appear much, much less than the risks of COVID. And the Delta va uh, variant is a game changer. So when people are on the fence, I, I would, I would uh, respectfully ask them to reconsider, speak to people who have had COVID, speak to people who have had the vaccine, and you know, come to a decision because the more of our community we can get vaccinated, the safer that will be. I think that concludes what I have to say today. I hope it's useful to everybody. and. Uh, be safe and God bless all of you.